Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeff Nichols. I'm Vice President of Professional Services with Domain Systems. I want to welcome you to this joint uh, video uh, with Propel uh, Solutions uh, and Domain Systems. Uh, with me on this uh, on this video will be Chuck Seren, who has spent a lot of time in the med med tech world. Uh, I will let him introduce himself. In fact, Chuck, why don't you do that now? Yeah, hi everybody. Chuck Seren, uh, VP of Industry Marketing for Med Tech and Life Sciences. Uh, been at Propel a few years now. Um, fortunately, I get to work with customers, prospects, um, even a little bit on the roadmap with development. So it's I really love it. Um, worked at Stryker for about 10 years prior, uh, deploying multiple PLM, QMS systems there, both Agile and Windchill, and uh, actually worked for Agile and Oracle for about eight years, and uh, even PTC prior to that. So really been around the PLM, QMS, and, and med dev space for quite a while. Thank you, Jeff. Great. Thanks, Chuck. Yeah, we're really excited for this opportunity to have uh, a dialogue with Chuck. Uh, so, uh Chuck, uh, you come from the, the industry, the med tech industry. Mm -hmm. uh, what are med tech companies experiencing that make them search for a PLM solution? And how does that, how does being on the Salesforce platform differentiate between uh, or extending PLM to the next level? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we we talked a little bit about PLM and even the concept of PVM, product value management, which I'll kind of lean into a little bit here. Um, you know, Propel obviously offers quality management, QMS, PLM, uh, PIM, and, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about this product value management piece as well. But what we're seeing customers experiencing, um, that was kind of the question, is really a lot of pain in connecting product quality and commercialization teams. So a lot of these companies um, are working with really disconnected and siloed systems and processes. Um, oftentimes there are point solutions, right? Where they've got like a manual quality system or a very rigid EQMS system that sort of fell short or an outdated PLM system. So they, they really see this need to extend um, quality and product and connect them. Um, a lot of times they're increasing their outsourcing or suppliers and they need to really get control of their bombs. Again, looking for you know PLM as as one of these solutions to add on. So quality is is also commonly uh, as we know kind of a silo. Sometimes it's kind of compliance in a box. Um, a lot of times these engineering teams are are lacking the ability to share product information uh, downstream to commercial teams, and uh, have really limited vis visibility to quality oftentimes too in post market issues. So what we're really seeing is in a bigger picture here is. Um, there's these huge value gaps out there, right? That are happening across the enterprise and across their part, you know, customers, partners, and suppliers. And this really kind of creates like data blind spots, um, inefficiencies, lost market share, increased warranty costs. And I think that that you know, one of the things that we talk about Propel is we really help bridge these gaps, right? We allow these teams to communicate all on the same platform. And I think that's important. Um, Propel really takes sort of a whole product approach where we have this single source of truth of data. So it's quality, it's product, it's compliance data. And we manage to get that throughout the entire product lifecycle, right? Concept to customer. Um, I think another element of that is that um, allowing teams to work together and seamlessly is important so that these teams can work earlier in the new product development process together so they can design for regulatory, you can design for quality, design for manufacturing, and you need a tool or system that can allow these teams to work together, to work also not only earlier in the new, in the new product development process, but also in parallel. So you can coordinate launches, you can work towards the same commercialization and kind of go to market plans. So that's kind of where we talk about Propel's cloud product value management solution. It's a, it's a little bit more encompassing here where we can improve product development cycle times while we can compress these sort of launch and commercialization efforts. Um, I think just to give a couple quick examples, maybe to dive a little deeper into the to the PLM um, question that you had is that, you know, when you when you combine product and quality, it really magnifies that value, right? So the quality teams being able to look at product helps them to assess root causes is quicker. It allows them to say, okay, well, what are the, you know, how do we investigate? Is it just the device or is it actually the bomb, the subassembly, a certain component or AML? which leads you to you know, understanding more about your supplier. So we can better ID those root causes of where is that product used across um, 
or sorry, where is it used across different products? Where is it sourced? Where is it shipped? And having all of this information at hand really helps you reduce escape quality issues, lower your cost of quality, less scrap, less rework, less redesign. And I think from the flip side, from a product side, being able to have a, a visibility of quality issues really helps you to not let past quality issues make its way into next generation or new products. Um, when I was at Stryker, um, allowing the SQE, supplier quality engineers and R&D, the ability to see quality events on their products and components that they were um, responsible for reduce their time to, to look at next gen products and new products from four weeks down to four days to do all of that research, which was quite a big a big improvement. And that was quoted multiple times by those teams of just having that visibility. And then, you know, lastly, product and commercial teams, um, you know, extends a little beyond the peel on question, but it gets more into the product information that you want to pass and share downstream to kind of to your marketing folks, your commercialization team, so that they can go to market faster, getting the right specs, the right measurements, standards, certifications, digital assets, or even costs. And that can make that way into marketing collateral or labeling or IFUs or promotional materials, even claims. So I think having this visibility is, is really what we talk about of extending that concept of you know, QMS, PLM into product value management. Um, I think, Jeff, you also asked a question a little bit about the Salesforce platform differentiating. Um, so I know I'm going a little long on this, um, but I think it's good to set the base here. But um, differentiating, you know, PVM, PLM, I, I, I think I kind of did that a bit, but what I think we've, we've learned is that, you know, PLM sort of fell short of its promise of, of getting beyond just the back office over all these decades of, um, you know, great PLM systems, but they never really made, made it further. And I think product value management, um, really gets it out to the front office as well to the commercialization teams. And, and also most importantly to the customer. And I think having these links to the customer to capture the voice of the customer, to have these closed loop processes that get back to the customer um, is, is really something important to, to, to have in a product. And I think, you know, having the Salesforce platform, you know, we could talk a little bit later if we have time about the technology aspects, but there's the business aspects of it too, that creates use cases that were not possible before. Um, you know, same platform, uh, tying together the same data, uh, seamlessly, such as, you know, you, you know, another example might be customer service folks that are pulling in issues from, uh, from the field and being able to automatically propagate that into a complaint for determining investigation and reportability or managing your field service assets, or we talked a little about marketing sales information and claims. So again, I think there's just so much potential there and, and it's something that we're really excited about. Great. Great. Thanks. That That's very good. You know, I had, uh, I had once had a customer where they were evaluating whether or not to have quality be part of their PLM system. And, it, and this vice president basically said, I had to make a choice of either having a lot of quality documentation, uh, which is great and good, or have that documentation related to the actual product itself, being able to build quality into the system for those second, third generations. So no, absolutely. Thank you, Chuck. Yes. Um, on that, you know, as uh, are, are you seeing interest in Propel from med tech uh, manufacturers that are running legacy on-premise or cloud PLM solutions? Yeah, I think um, it's a huge movement. Um, we get a lot of prospects that are wanting to transition from these legacy on-premise. Um, you know, it's cost reduction measures, consolidating legacy solutions. Um, you know, we see so many on-prem, you know, multiple disparate solutions out there. We see companies that are hosted but want to move to a true cloud system. Um, I think the other flavors are, you know, people just feel like they're laggards and, and they, they're getting left behind. And so you see these initiatives to modernize systems. Um, so it's both from a cost, risk, and... Um, you know, future proofing perspectives, I, I might call it. Um, I also, you know, here there's a lot of younger generation or other customers that have moved across and, and worked with many, you know, QMS PLM systems in the past, and they're looking to be on more modern platforms, cloud solutions. So it's also part of your own internal customers and employees that are, are demanding this as well. But I think that leads to um, 
kind of the whole, you know, I don't want to overplay the move to cloud initiative, but, you know, we've seen that in the last few years accelerate extensively with people having to work remotely. We're seeing a lot more remote audits, whether it's, you know, suppliers or with agencies. Um, there's just a much greater demand for collaboration in the cloud and, and collaboration remotely. Um, they're shifting supply chains that are, I think, demanding a lot more um, reason to move to cloud solutions because you need to decrease your risk. You need to work with a greater number of partners as you start to try to de-risk your supply chain by what, you know, when I was a striker, there was typically, you'd single source a lot of things, right? And you'd make these great partnerships, but you have to be careful about all your eggs in one basket, especially today when you hit these, you know, shortages or, you know, price jacking up really high. I've heard from some of our other customers that deal a lot with electronics. So you really have to de-risk your supply chain and, and, and have them even closer to you than ever before. So I, I kind of, you know, lump that into the move to the cloud in a bit of a way. But I also think um, having really secure IP is another important aspect. As we do shift around the world, um, you know, how we outsource things, as we have people working remotely from, you know, whether it's other states or countries, um, you have to have a very secure platform. And, and you know, I'll, I could talk later about technology, but, you know, being on some of the most um, secure cloud platforms is, is critically important these days, right? Um, and when we say secure IP, it's also how do you, you know, transfer that information from like a design transfer standpoint to your to your suppliers. And I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, sharing and, and getting into that if we want to later on. But I'll, the other piece I mentioned, um, I'll finish with is just kind of the platform consolidation. So I, I've been hearing this more and more, actually, about initiatives to try to get onto one common platform, um, both product quality commercialization, just like what we've been talking about. Um, and I also think this leads to less IT overhead by being on a common platform, you can leverage resources across, you know, customer, you know, educated people that, that can use the same technology to connect over to your product and, and leverage these types of, in our case, Salesforce admins to help, you know, help you do that. You don't need, have to have Salesforce to have Propel, but, you know, it does, it, it does, um, it does create a lot of use cases that we mentioned if, if you do. Um, I would say also easier to deploy, having, you know, being on a, on a great platform, easier to maintain lots more improvements because you're on a much more scalable and, and flexible architectural system that can, can move fast. And then lastly, upgrading, right? So being on this type of platform can, can vastly help you upgrade so much faster, um, as well. Great. Thanks. No, thank you. Thank you. Now I know that uh, in conversations with a lot of our med tech customers, you know, one of the concerns about, you know, moving to a cloud type solution is uh, FDA validation requirements. How mm -hmm. does Propel address and help to mitigate some of that? Yeah, yeah, I agree. We hear validation is always a question. You know, we, we talk a lot about the product and it always ends with how do we, you know, how do we get validated quicker? And I think that's the the long pull in a lot of implementations um, validation because of you know the amount of testing. Some companies have you know you know I think Propel just to mention is a great out of the box solution with great you know quality events, great you know change control, all that. Um, but there's a lot of customers that do want to configure to their own business processes, so you need a tool that's flexible to do both. And oftentimes that dictates how much validation you need to do, right? How, how unique is it to yours? And I think that's a, a point where I make that, um, you know, about half of our customers are regulated and med tech, and they're always looking for this about how can we get be both best practices and how can we also grow in the future for our business and, and how do you adapt to our business processes? So we do offer um, a validation accelerator package, and that really helps our customers get a nice head start towards validation. So, you know, to kind of break that down a little bit, we, we provide fully executed OQ. So we do a tremendous amount of work on our end to make sure that you're covered for all of the, you know, the, a lot of the functional capabilities of our product. Um, we give an IQ framework. So it's really easy for you just to, you know, check a few things unique to your environment and have your IQ done. And then we also provide PQ 
templates to help you get started on a lot of those out of the box processes. And then, and then, you know, the customers can sort of cater that to, to their own needs and, and finish up their validation there. We also have a lot of uh, doc templates like documentation templates as well for like part 11, GXP risk assessment, again, things to help you get validated really quickly with some great templates that are already sort of, you know, started for you. Um, Cause it's important to get compliant, but it's also important to stay compliant. So I think I mentioned um, a moment ago about upgrades and, you know, we are seeing our customers upgrade faster and faster and faster. We actually do three releases a year. So what we're doing is we're seeing customers, um, you know, moving towards once a year, possibly even faster. And we're doing a lot on our end too, to, to continue to make the upgrade path easier for our customers. Um, so having those multiple releases a year really gives customers options. And, and we, one thing unique about us too is we don't make our customers upgrade at every release, right? With our med tech and regulated customers, they can actually pull. So we're just making and working together to to look to upgrade, you know, much faster and realize, um, you know, with every release, we're creating a lot of innovations. Um, we, you know, we have a we have release seminars on that. Um, got a lot of webinars that that you have access to, but just the amount of innovation that that comes from Appel is is amazing. So we want our customers and our customers do want to take advantage of that. Great. No, I appreciate that. Uh, that, that those uh, packs really help people get on a, on a uh, very accelerated path. I've seen that in the past. Mm -hmm. um, what about reporting, right? I mean, you know, med tech uh, companies and manufacturers have to do a lot of reporting. Uh, what is in Propel to support that reporting capability? Yeah, so we have actually really tremendous uh, dashboards and reporting capabilities. I can't wait for Lance to show the demo here because there's just it's it's really awesome, and it's awesome in the sense that um, it's really easy to use, very Excel like, um, very controlled access to decide who can see which ones. And if you dig down, there's you know formulas and thresholds, and we can do cross object searches like you know for a given case. Um, case by supplier, by product line, you know, you can just really stitch these together so nicely. Um, I, I kind of feel like we're standing on the shoulders of giants too, in some ways, because we've got Salesforce doing a billion dollars of R&D improvements a year. So when we look at the analytics, the reporting capabilities, the ease of use of reporting, it is really unprecedented. And, and our customers just love it. They can make their own dashboards so fast. Um, one of our customers, Imperative Care, talked about, we all know how important management reviews are in, in med tech especially. And they were able to go from preparing and taking time for five days to generate these reports um, down to five minutes. And that's a quote from them um, because of just that ease of use of pulling it in and making a nice dashboards and, and, and reports for that. We also see a lot of uh, reporting in our training, who needs to train, supplier scorecarding, how are suppliers doing against given products, um, you know, a lot of risk levels of knowing where we are. I think there's a couple, there's two other um, sort of unique to med tech reporting that I might mention too is, um, you know, I, I think of EIFU, electronic instructions for use is another method of reporting because we actually provide that in a portal capability where the source of truth, the revision controls, the matrix of region country language is all controlled within Propel and by the, by the user. Um, to the revision. And then we actually have a portal which pushes it out um, so that the customer or anyone in the world, theoretically, and, and does today, you can go to Cantel and see that one of the sites there, but they can actually walk through a sequence of, of selections and get a full report of the actual IFU to this exact revision of what they want. So that's kind of reporting. I think another reporting I'll stretch to is reportability. And when we talked a little bit about case to complaint, you know, getting the issues from the customer, putting that into complaint, investigating it. Um, one of the things that we offer as well is the ability to determine reportability for notably for adverse events reporting. And it leads to a report because after you investigate, you determine what countries are affected, what agencies you want to report to, which decision trees. We have some customers doing over a dozen decision trees, all automated in the system. Um, where they can make those selections and upon you know selecting the FDA's decision tree it will automatically kick off a, uh, an electronic medwatch 3500a form all electronic all managed by propel 
that um, the, the user can fill out. And when they're done, they push a button, sends an e-submission to the FDA, full acknowledgement, one, two, three back with audit history. And it tracks that entire, you know, that entire um, correlation ID or transaction set um, for, for the user. So it is a report. I extended about how it gets created, but I, I still consider that part of reporting too. No, oh, that's great. Fantastic. So uh, in the first question, uh, we spoke very, very broadly, but, and we've talked a lot about managing the full product life cycle uh, mm -hmm. of things. Um, let's dig into the interconnectivity of functional areas for Propel, uh, how those different functional areas are tied together and maybe how they work all together inside the Propel solution. Okay. Yeah, that's a, there's a lot of, a lot of areas we can talk about, um, you know, Propel uh, sort of emphasize again, takes that whole product approach, you know, quality product, um, commercialization, everything really. And it takes that source of truth. Um, and that source of truth really starts to emanate through like your bill of materials, your AML. These are differentiators in our product, right? Um, managing the DHF, the DMR, um, and how does that information get shared? So I think that's all really important. When we talk about a bill of materials, it's a very complex structure, but I think one of the things, and, and Lance will be showing it later, actually, I don't want to spend too much time on it. It's just our revision capability. We manage each revision. So it makes it really easy to do compares. It's not a report. It's actually a true red line, green line of the exact situation that you pick. Um, we make it really easy to navigate the bomb. Um, and I'm sure he'll show you some of the bomb navigator stuff to keep you in context at all times to go do your investigations through the bomb, where used, what's the AML that, that you need to, to associate it with it. And then I think another part of that, um, I emphasize the AML a lot because I think that really exemplifies um, some other capabilities in the product of understanding down to the component level um, within your bomb, who your supplier is. How do you share that information? So we can share with our suppliers securely at any level. Um, and, and that really takes that whole IP thing off the table. It helps your, your suppliers to not only be able to share information, but also be able to delegate some of that information to them. Um, we have a, some capability with Silicon Expert to you know, really manage the risks, the compliance, the availability, environmental uh, compliance like Ross and Reach. Um, understanding the cost of those components and being able to track those costs over time. So there's a lot of control and levels when we think about the bomb down the sub assemblies, down the components of the AML. And then um, more functionality, you know, again, you know, spinning back to med tech, um, that's our, most of our audience here is, you know, thinking about the DHF. So we help, we help customers to structure and manage and organize that DHF really well. Um, we can actually, structure it in, in, in a very convenient way so that it's able to take snapshots over time. What did that DHF look at a certain time? How do we organize all of the DHF documents that go into it? How do we reuse documents across other DHFs? Those are all things that are really easily possible in our system. And then that leads to kind of the DMR. We talked about the bomb, but also the DMR and how to structure that with the labeling, the packaging, you know, all of the other elements, uh, you know, procedures, manufacturing assembly procedures, and how do we manage that DMR really, really conveniently? So I think that just leads to that conversation again about product quality and, and how we can really manage that extremely well and tie these together. Um, I don't know, Jeff, you had any examples that, that kind of extend that as well. Uh, well, I, you know, which ties into this, this next question. Mm -hmm. Where um, you know the objective of PLM is connecting users across the value chain, um, mm -hmm. I you know uh, Propel being a cloud-based solution, you know it makes it easier for the extension those partners right. More and more companies are going out to partners and suppliers uh, to get business done. It makes it easier, and your partner is now on the same page because you're not sending files back and forth. They're actually interacting with the business activity of developing products with you, and mm -hmm. so um, you know that that is a form of you know bringing people together and interconnecting functional areas um, that Propel can offer. So, well, let, uh, you know, 
due to time, let's if we can, let's move yeah. on to uh, the next question relative to quality requirements for med tech uh, companies. Um, helping QA managers keep their eye on the ball in terms of critical me metrics. How does Propel help with that? I know we talked about reports and things like that, but what else does Propel offer in helping those uh, quality assurance managers? Yeah, I like the idea of keeping the eye on the ball here. Um, so there's some very time and time again we hear about you know quality managers, quality folks. What are they? What What are they most concerned with? And it's obviously being audit ready. So you know we of course have capabilities around internal, external supplier audits, being able to track your audits, but it also you know, what are the things that you're trying to, to control and, and, and take care of? And I think training is a really big one. Um, so having capability around training plans, training assignments um, to individuals or groups, being able to do quizzes so that you can show that they actually, you know, comprehended it and read it and understood it. These are all important things. And, and having a dashboard to show you who is left to train, who didn't train. Um, but also within that is, how you assign it. So having classroom structures or instructor led training, or how do you delegate things? Those are all very important pieces within training records that I, that I think are important. Also automating it so that it's really tied to your procedures and your documentation. So that when you, when you rev a certain document, is it a, is it a document that needs to be trained and, and does that actually automatically kick off your training? So that it's seamlessly tied to your to your documentation, your procedures, your work instructions, et cetera, and ensuring the right the right people get trained at the right time. And I think there's there's a lot to that that I, I can't tell you how many times I hear the pain of of what customers go through on this in either Excel or inferior systems. Um, so th that's a big one. I talked about management review again, having the right tools to pull together suppliers, complaints, training, all those all those reports we talked about earlier and how do we pull those together to, to get all of that information. Um, I'd also say supplier management. We didn't really touch on it a lot. We I started to allude to the fact of being able to share the right information down to the right level and delegate it. But there's also the, the, the idea of bringing your suppliers and onboarding them, qualifying them, and having the right tools to do onboarding, to monitor them, and also to get to the point of where you need to about, evaluate or reevaluate them. So again, having all this information at hand about what is the AML, what parts are they approved for, how well are they doing, how many quality issues associated with that, and then we could decide that you know these guys need, need to be reevaluated on a periodic frequency or based on you know how well they're performing. So you know we have uh, supplier evaluation capabilities that I think are really important as well scorecarding those suppliers and kind of understanding, you know, where, where do they, how are they fitting? How do they sit? And, um, you know, I mentioned just Kappa's, you know, again, just out of the box Kappa process uh, to understand how do we pass this down? How do we understand what's the, the root cause? What are the affected items and pass it down to engineering so they can do ECOs and have that full closed loop fix. Okay. Very, very nice. So, uh, you know, for our listeners, I don't know whether or not you, you know that uh, Chuck has a podcast on quality and med tech. Um, Chuck, is there something uh, in particular, you know, or is there something, a particular story that yeah. stands out that ties into what we're talking about here? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of some of the conversations I've had here on the podcast. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, you know, one of the couple, I'll mention a couple of stories briefly um, in, in a couple of excerpts, you know, Dialy is a company that does portable hemodialysis solution. And they actually have like over 80%, it was even 90% when I was talking to them, usage and adoption rate across the entire company that uses Propel. And I think that just extends to the ease of use of the product, how we talked about PVM, the product value management, how it really crosses all of the cross-functional users. And he even I even remember him saying how engineers were able to get much closer to quality, which you know we've already talked about earlier. Um, I think that was important. They were able to really create their own workflows and extend it to purchase recs and other things because of our low code, no code capability to do that. I think another one um, that comes to mind is you know we really have a couple of the top sterilization companies, so these are big med dev capital equipment devices, and being able to do that complaints, getting the case to the complaints, to the reverse event reporting really reduced a lot of errors in time. And these customers that are using this, our, our tools are getting like 30% faster issued resolution times. 
Um, and we have customers extending the product like Fractal, um, you know, being able to do uh, some great lot history record capability and traceability um, to the revisions of the device. Um, I think the only one other mentioned, um, Tom's, they're a contract manufacturer, uh, using the product great and looking to extend and grow so that they can take on more of that CDMO or that contract design element of it and being able to, you know, take more control of the designs process, the DHF, and, and really advising their customers on some of these products. So it's interesting to see companies growing um, within themselves and pivoting and, and changing their business models and having a tool that can grow with these types of pivots. Oh, great, great, what are great stories, thanks. Um, you know, it, it's been, you know, not quite a year that Domain has partnered with uh, Propel. Uh, we're excited about this new partnership and looking forward to working more and more on joint implementations where domain can bring a, a very deep uh, domain domain from a, a, a mm -hmm. knowledge base and, <laughs> and uh, topic right. perspective, a deep right. domain uh, understanding and helping customers uh, figure out uh, solutions to problems that they experience and uh, bring, and having Propel be that technology that they that they sit on in order to help them do those uh, or solve those problems in a very quick fashion. Uh, you know, the, the other thing is, is that we're really excited because, you know, uh, Propel is an Agile-esque, I'll, I'll use that term, in two, mm -hmm. in two fashions. One, it, it is the, one of the, it's the closest Agile-like for all those existing Agile users, but uh, it's also very nimble very quick, and you've alluded to many, many times the uh, expediency of adoption rate. And so we're really excited to be, you know, to be working with Propel in those uh, pursuits and implementing Propel at, at a lot of those of those companies, uh, particularly med tech, but it doesn't need to be net med tech. It can be any kind of uh, industry. So we're excited about that. Are, are there any thoughts that, that you want to bring up relative to this uh, Propel Domain Systems Partnership? Yeah, briefly, I, I, I've worked with you guys in the past, um, you know, again, coming from Agile Oracle in the past. So I, I really look forward to working with you guys again in the future. You've been a great partner and you got a lot of great domain, as you mentioned, experience and best practices. So I think combining those with our Propel team is going to be awesome. The only other thing that kind of makes me laugh a little bit is when you talk about the Agile-esque. I mean, our the head of product at Agile, Ray Hine, was, you know, our, our founder. And uh, so he brought a lot of his learnings from that and, and from working in several other enterprise systems. I, and I think you're, we, you know, we look to, he looked to how can we improve and, and open up to this, you know, PVM opportunities and, and really improve some of the product, like we talked about the revisioning and some of the capabilities that Lance will show. So this, that's great. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, second to last question. Um, uh I know a lot of med tech companies are concerned that when they move off their existing legacy system, what happens to their historical content? Yeah, great question. Um, I'm going to lean on again the fact that um, well, we've got some great, you know, some great professional services folks that come from a whole a variety of businesses and uh, and enterprise systems. So. Getting this data in is awesome in Propel. It was, again, architected the way it should be about being able to easily import it in. But I'll add the fact that if you think architecturally how it was built, when you talk about historical content, it's since we track every revision, we can actually import data better than our own competitors can import their own data because we do have this tremendous control at the individual revision level and can structure the bombs, the AML off of all of that, and just great import tools to bring things in um, to the system. Um, and I could go deeper on this, but you know, one of our customers just, just the previous month here actually went live in three weeks. Um, it was a med device, um, cyber or robotic dental company. So uh, it just shows how quickly things can happen um, and how easily you can migrate data when we need to. Great. No, thanks. Appreciate that. Um, then the uh, the last question before we turn time over to Lance mm -hmm. is, um, you know, fears of going to the cloud, right? You've touched on yeah. security, you've touched on all that kind of stuff, uh, and the ability to um, 
upgrade for lack of better words in you know in a rapid fashion yeah uh, you want to speak any more on the, that you know the anybody who has fears of going to the cloud and the benefits of cloud technology yeah i, I mean I, I think we're at an age now where i think that's behind most people but the the fear meaning that you know security being on the most secure cloud technology platform in the world is is a wonderful comfort so there shouldn't be any fear in that um, the speed of cloud, the accessibility of cloud, you know, we talked about it, all these benefits, um, the ease of use, um, those are behind us and, and those are there where we stand on that, that foundation. Now, again, you don't have to have Salesforce to, you know, to, to buy Propel, right. And use Propel. It's just, again, we're natively built on that platform from day one. So we, we take, we get the value out of a lot of that. So I won't go too deep on that. Um, but I also want to emphasize again, just the flexibility you have by being on the cloud to take advantage of the innovations, to grow with your business needs, to work with partners and and an almost unlimited supply of partners that can help you in the future, whether it's consulting or whether it's through the app exchange, which has thousands of apps out there. So you can be on the same you know native database to, to accomplish things. I, I might mention, Companies like NetSuite is a, is a partner of ours. We have a very strategic partnership with them um, and being able to get data from obviously PLM and, and releasing it to ERP is very important. So, um, you know, rest assured, we have the a tremendous partner exchange and partner levels there. So a lot of value. Great. Well, thanks. Thanks, Chuck. People have been able to see and uh, look at the interaction and the vast capabilities that Pell offers. Uh, in particular, it's the med tech uh, industry and environment. So uh, I want to thank uh, Chuck Saren uh, from Propel. Uh, it's been a, a wonderful uh, opportunity to chat and uh, to bring about this webinar for you. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact uh, the uh, inform from the information that uh, will be provided to contact us. And, uh, to uh, have any further conversations. Again, thanks again, Chuck and Lance, and uh, to everybody else, have a great day. Thank you.